Recently, you will have seen there's been an update to KIP and version 3 of this excellent software has now been released. This is a huge change from what you've seen before with KIP and there's so much functionality to go through. So I just want to say a big thank you to David, all the beta testers and everyone else that's involved with it because this is a fabulous bit of software. If you're not used to KIP or you haven't used it before, KIP is a visualization tool that uses all your signal K data and displays it in a format that you can interpret and understand as you can see on the screen at the moment. You've got a number of different widgets in here that you can very quickly configure and you can get a really good fully functional MFD type screen within a couple of minutes. With version 3 there's been some real fundamental changes. The first change is that now it's more of a touch first experience so it's been redesigned, the navigation kind of bar at the bottom that used to be there has disappeared and you control it using touch. Now, for anybody who hasn't got touch or like me has a mixture where they have some devices that are touch and some aren't, there are some handy shortcut keys that you can move around and obviously you can also control it with your mouse. So if you grab it and you click the screen, you can move it around with your mouse if you want to. The other thing that has changed now is how you design the dashboards. So when you go into each dashboard, if I just bring up one of the menus at the side, I'll run all through this in a minute, is you can see straight away that when you go into edit mode, you get these little options at the side of each widget here. So I can just drag and drop this and just make this to whatever size I want. Just straight away, I can move them around. I don't have to go back through the menu and start resizing and moving things if I wanted that there, this here, that down there, that up there. It's just dead simple to do. So I don't want to do that, so I'll just cancel that change because this is the layout that I like. There's lots of different colors now. So you can see on the screen here, I've got a number of different widgets in different colors. So your color choices are, you've got the contrast, which is the white on black. You've got a blue, a green, orange, yellow, pink, purple, and gray. So you can select those different colors there. You also have the op option to display zones. So where you might have configured a zone, and I'll show you some of my test setup, you can either display the zone and allow the gauge to change color as it goes through the zone, or you can turn that functionality off and not have the zones displayed in KIP. So that's another thing that, that's been changed between the last couple of versions. Um, you can also see that the resolution has, has been improved. So the, I'm obviously recording this on quite a large screen at the moment. Um, you can see that everything is really, really sharp. So that's nice as well. And there's some other things that we'll get into as we go through the video. To navigate around, there's a number of different options. As I say, it's touch first, so we can just simply click and drag. Or obviously, if we were on a touch device, we could swipe down and it would go through the different dashboards that I've got here. So just from the top or the bottom, you can just click and you can just simply navigate through your dashboards and you can see that the dashboard name is appearing on the right hand side of the screen. That is also customizable. You can also rearrange those dashboards. So if you don't like the way that maybe when you were building the dashboard, you don't actually want them to be displayed in that way, you can go in and change that. You can also control this, as I say, using the keyboard. So for me, that's control, shift and up and down. Uh, and I can do exactly the same and navigate through those different pages by clicking those keys. So I can also bring up the menus at the side by clicking the left and the right key. So I've got notifications on the left and on the right hand side, I've got this menu here, which allows me to get into the configuration. So on this side, we've got some buttons straight away, top and bottom. This button allows us to go full screen. This button allows us to switch into night mode. And the bottom button is the unlock configuration kind of button. So we can click on that and we can start to edit our screen straight away. And then you can see that the menu changes at the bottom here for a tick to finish or an X to cancel and close the options. So bring that menu back up. If we go into dashboards and if we want to add a new dashboard, we simply click this button here to add the dashboard. And I'm going to call this one test so that you can watch when I move it around. So it's dropped that one in position eight for the moment. Now let's say I want that between dashboard one and the battery. I simply grab it and I drop it in. And now it will go dashboard one, test, battery, engine, and through the dashboards like that. Now let's just say I finished my testing and I don't want that dashboard anymore. To get rid of it, I long click, long tap on that dashboard. I and mean, I've got a couple of options here. So I can either duplicate or I can delete. So I'm gonna delete that. Let's just say I want to duplicate one of these because these are really good. Again, long click, long tap, and I have the option to duplicate that dashboard. 
and you can see it then creates a copy of it. So it'll copy all the widgets, all the setup of that dashboard and create you a copy of it so that you can then change the layout or change some functionality on that dashboard. To get out of that, you click on the little X or you tap on the X at the top here and you come out of that and you go back to your normal screen. You've got a data inspector so here you can see all the different data fields that are coming in just like you could before and it shows you the unit type on the right hand side here so that you can see what the default unit is for that particular stream that's coming in. Next one we've got data sets so this is where if you want the small graph in the corner um, or you want to store a little bit of data in KIP because if you remember KIP is live data that comes out of Signal K, it doesn't actually have any historic data in. This is a way to get some historic data into KIP. So you can click in here, you can add a field, and as you can see there, I use wind speed apparent. And then what you do then is you call that on your dashboard. So if we just go through the process of, well, let's edit this one actually, that'll be easier. So you can see I've got my Signal K path there. Um, I've just had to change that to SK SIM because this is recorded on my test setup. And you can see that I've got a sampling duration. So I'm looking for 30 seconds worth of that data to be displayed in KIP. So if we come out, you can see that actually in action down in this bottom corner. Again, this is all test data, um, but you can see that that's coming in. And you can see here's the live data display in the center. And down in the corner, we've got uh, a little bit of an archive of, of what that wind speed was, whether it's increased or decreased. So obviously you can still include things like Grafana graphs or call external websites. That widget is still there. Um, and you can call longer term data using one of those sources. But for a small graph like that, where you just want to see a little bit of historic data, then do that in KIP. It's more than capable of doing it and it looks really smart. Back into the menu here, if we go into the configuration, we've got a simplified configuration menu here. Um, we're able to back up the current active configuration onto the server, so essentially saving it. Um, and we can put that under different configuration names. We're able to go in and have a look at deleting those configurations. So you can see I've got um, one stored under the global user there. Um, I can go in and delete that. Or you can replace it. You can see here there's a couple of other options underneath. We've got under this advanced section, we can download the active configuration as a file. So if you want to take a copy of what we've currently got in a file to transfer it to some, somewhere else, then we can download a copy of that. And that's exactly what I've done here to get my boat config loaded into the version of kit that you see on the screen today. So I downloaded that on the boat, transferred the file, put it in the cloud, and then put it on this one. You can select a configuration, so when you come to upload it, that's what I did, I then clicked this, selected my file and uploaded it, and then I saved that to the server. You can load the demo version by clicking here, or you can default it, um, and you can clear your current config connection. So there are your different options, and it's just been streamlined a little bit to make it a little bit easier to understand. There's still a helpful um, menu here that, that goes through. It also shows you all the different gesture controls and the mouse controls that I've explained so far. Um, but there's also a really useful bit of information here on how to get the basics here. We've got dashboard layouts, loads of different information on how to actually set it up. So again, really useful, really handy. So we bring that menu back up and we go into settings. You'll be quite familiar with this one. So this is where obviously you configure your Signal K server. It should automatically pick that up, um, but that's where you configure it. Put in your credentials so that when you log in, it automatically loads that config for you. I've, I've always used that since it arrived. I think it's really useful. A um, couple of other options there for subscribing to remote sources and if Signal K is behind a proxy. Some display options. So. In night mode, you've got a couple of different uh, options here. You can enable the red only mode, so everything goes kind of red, um, which is the one that I like, or you can adjust the brightness of the screen and just basically dim it down so you keep all the current uh, settings that you've got in all of your dashboards, but you just dim it down for night mode. A couple of different things for the theme, although this is much simpler now. Um, but you basically have this option to, if it's in, in the sun and you need, to, obviously, to have very high contrast, then you can enable that option there. 
You've got the notifications, so again, you can disable the notifications if that's not something that you use and you've got some configuration options under the notifications menu if they're set up. And then the very end one is about the unit. So what are the default units for every bit of data that comes into Signal K? That then gets pulled into the widgets that you set up and it also is visible on the data browser that you saw a little while ago. And the last one takes you direct to the help that we saw before. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get a new page and we're going to run through how we would set up a, a brand new page straight out of the box. So we're going to go to dashboards, we're going to create a new dashboard and we're going to call that test and we're going to drop it into that page there. So if I close that down now and then I go down one, we go to the test page. So here we've got a, a completely blank page. Let's just unlock that. Now I can click anywhere on this screen. So I'm going to click right there. So now I've got my add a widget option. Um, I've got the, the usual ones that we've seen before. We've got the numeric, we've got the text, uh, date and time, position, that's a new one. Switch panel, slider, that's also new. We've got a static label. We've got the gauges, so we've got the simple linear gauge. We've got the linear gauge that, that's a little bit more customizable between sort of vertical and horizontal, and you can have a few, bit more information on it. We've got the radial gauge, got the compass. The steel ones aren't really used, I don't think, as much, but they are still there. Uh, and then you've got some components, so that, that wind steering gauge, the lovely gauge that sits in the middle, uh, freeboard SK, data chart, which is the one that I've got showing the wind information, autopilot, race timer, embedded web page, or a tutorial. So what we're gonna do is we are just gonna take a numeric one. And as you can see, it's just dropped it straight in there. That, that is where I clicked on the screen. I don't want it there. I'm gonna just drag it up into this top corner. So straight away, creating these dashboards is so much quicker than it was before. So we'll click on that. We'll just find a very simple path. We'll do that one there. Uh, and we're gonna color that in green. So what was that? That was speed through the water. So speed through the water, save. So there we go, so speed through the water. Now let's say that actually we need that really, really large for some reason, so we can just drag it straight away and make it big. Probably not as big as that because what I actually do want to do is duplicate that. So if you click and hold or tap and hold, this menu pops up at the bottom and now we can either duplicate it or delete. So I'm gonna duplicate that. So now I've got the duplicated one. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this one blue and I don't want to see the decimal. So straight away, I've got the same data that, or the same kind of basic setup. It's copied the path across, but I can re quickly reconfigure that. So when I've created some of my dashboards, let's just save that. If I go back round, when I've created some of my dashboards in the past, so like these gauges that you can see along the top, they're very, very similar really in config. Obviously these have all got the same color. I wanted house in most of those. So it was much quicker for me to click on those and duplicate them than it was in the past where I would have had to set the screen up to reconfigure it or move things around and then to create the gauge from the ground up in each one. I don't need to do that anymore. So it makes making dashboards really, really quick. That is one of my favorite features with this. It's really good. The fact that I can move stuff around reconfigure it and also duplicate is just, just brilliant. So if like me, you're an existing user of Kip, when Kip first loads, you can actually migrate your configuration. So you have two options here. You can upgrade your version two configuration to version three, or you can start fresh. As you can see here, there's a few um, handy tips on how to migrate your version 2 across to version 3 because, as we've discussed, it's fundamentally different underneath and you will lose a bit of the position and the order, so just bear that in mind. But it is possible to upgrade those dashboards to version 3. So I just want to show you the zone configuration. So we've got two gauges and two numeric values set up here. On the left hand side we've got no zone information set so so we just go into the edit on either of these it makes no difference let's just go in and you can see I've got the this ignore zone configuration set so if I do the same on this one ignore zone configuration set so I've duplicated these dials and on the right hand side I've got the zones configured so you can see the zone in here so this is nominal 
then we go into alert, warn, alarm, emergency. Now, emergency, I don't really think you're supposed to use. I think that is for emergency situations like man overboard, fire, that sort of stuff. So I think actually the levels are alert, warn and alarm. So that would give you yellow, orange and red. And then this very dark red is that um, emergency state, which you don't tend to use. But you can configure it how you want. That That's just, you know, that's down to you and what you want to do. But you can see how we've got that set up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to simulate what will happen when we've got the zone configuration turned on versus the non-zone configuration. And you're going to see a few uh, differences on that. So let's just start up in that speed a little bit now. So we're still within the nominal zone, so we're still fine. The next time we go up, we go into that first alert. On the left hand side, we've got the notification popped up and we've gone into this first level. And you notice that these have changed colour. So we've lost the blue now and we've gone to this yellow colour. So we carry on. One up again, we're still okay. Next one, we've gone into this orange level red level and now it's alerting again in the bottom left and if we carry on going we go into that top level there and we're now into the alarm state so you can see as we back that down that they'll start to change and come out but the left hand side is completely ignoring that zone configuration so depending on what you want to uh, alert on or alarm on you can configure these zones and set them up however you want and that will then influence what the gauge colour is if you want to do that. If you don't want to do that then that's also fine. You can have that configured up but you can get Kip to ignore that and just use the colour of your choice which I think is really quite nice so just depending on what you want to do with it. And just a quick note to say that that very top level of emergency is actually ignored in terms of colours as seen here. Just pop the notification menu out and you can see that that value obviously has gone higher than than what we wanted so we've got that alarm notification happening on the side and again you can use the key combination you can slide the tab out with a swipe or you can click on the icon at the bottom so here's one of the dashboards that i'm currently using on the boat and just my sort of final thoughts on this as we wrap the video up this is a brilliant update it really is the way that you can now create the dashboards is so much easier than it was before and the fact that you can move things around and create layouts that you actually want to see um, is really really good there's some things obviously i've not discussed yet i've not gone through the slider or the control panel i'll cover that in another video because i'm actually controlling all my led lights on the boat with this now but the features that you can get out of this platform, I can't get on my Raymarine Axiom. So the fact that you can do this is it's just brilliant. And I, and I just want to say thank you really to the people behind the scenes that, that, that actually make this happen because it really is a good product. Um, and I've had several people come on board the boat um, and use the boat and notice how good this is and how easy it is to use. So that is the ultimate test at the end of the day. If you'd like to get involved, there's an active Discord channel pop on over to there and contribute in any way that you can. So thank you very much. Thank you very much to the developers behind the scenes working on this. Uh, and thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.